The Twilight Realm is a mysterious world of perpetual tranquil twilight that's distinct from the manipulative power that Xant exploits to strip Hyrule of light and cause transformations to occur in beings. This distinction between the two forms of twilight and the reason why Link is able to retain his human form when entering the realm are a few among many mysteries present in the English version of Twilight Princess. However, exclusively in the Japanese version, we can uncover the answers to these puzzles, discover the Twilight Realm's true connection to Hyrule and ultimately establish a much clearer image of what the Twilight's true purpose may actually be. The story of Twilight's Princess unfolds in Ordon Village, where we join Link in his preparations for his task involving a journey to Hyrule Castle. Unknown to our hero at the time, the Kingdom of Hyrule was slowly being submerged in Twilight, causing beings to lose their physical bodies and turn into spirits or shadow beasts. This attack was the doing of Zant, a self-proclaimed King of Shadows who initiated the Twilight Invasion to siphon the light out of Hyrule. Zant's Twilight Invasion of the World of Light began to close in on even the secluded Ordon village and eventually Link and his friends are attacked by King Bolvlin who knocks Link unconscious and kidnaps Ilya and the children of Ordon village. These events set Link's adventure in Twilight Princess in motion. After his consciousness is restored, Link hastily runs towards the Faron woods where he encounters a giant curtain of twilight. He is suddenly pulled through the massive curtain, forcing his transformation into a blue-eyed wolf. Exhausted, Link collapses and is imprisoned in the cellars of Hyrule Castle, leading to his first encounter with Midna. After learning of the dark fate that has befallen the land of Hyrule, Link travels with Midna to locate the fragments of the fused shadow to defeat Zant, reverse the spread of twilight that plagues the world of light and free the light spirits. When Link successfully collects the last of the remaining tears of light, Hyrule is cleansed of the initial remaining twilight and the third light spirit, Lenaru, is freed. Soon after, Lenaru shows Link a very creepy but extremely significant vision that illustrates the story of the creation of the world and the fate of the Twilight Realm. In the English version of Twilight Princess, Lenaru begins by explaining how the goddesses created a world of life and order from chaos, and then granted power equally to all who dwelt in the light, before returning to the heavens. Whereas in Japanese, the truth is a little different. It's revealed that the goddesses did not only favour those who dwelt in the light, but distributed power to everyone equally. This striking disparity between the original Japanese version and the inaccurate English translation we were given is incredibly important since it radically changes the entire foundation story of Twilight Princess. Lenaru then introduces the Sacred Realm as the place where the goddesses descended. The Sacred Realm has always been a very mysterious concept in the Zelda series. Its precise geographical location is never quite explained. Instead, Link is teleported there by the Master Sword or via some kind of portal. It appears to be an alternate dimension, but is also described as being located somewhere within the Kingdom of Hyrule. Let's take a look at the term the Japanese text uses to describe what we know in English as the Sacred Realm. The land where the gods first descended is called the Sacred Land. The word for the Sacred Realm in Japanese is Seichi, which can translate as Holy Land, Sacred Land, Sacred Place, or even Sanctuary. In other words, Seichi refers to a land that has some kind of relationship to gods and saints. It usually refers specifically to a religious place where something of tremendous significance began. This word has significant religious connotations that are justified in other parts of the Japanese text, where the people of Hyrule are described as deeply religious and faithful. Hyrule has been called the Sacred Land since long ago, and today is under the protection of the Hyrule royal family and deeply faithful people, but the Japanese version states that Hyrule itself is the Sacred Land, which does make sense considering how the land of Hyrule is a direct creation of the goddesses. Perhaps the people are deeply religious in the Japanese version, as they are devoted to protecting Hyrule precisely because it is the very sacred land where the goddesses first landed and filled with life. Whereas this same line in English does not state anything about the people of Hyrule being religious or faithful 
visible at all. Instead, there is just mention of the existence of spiritual figures. Lenaru continues to refer to Hyrule as the sacred land in Japanese, elaborating how conflict had ensued over it. On the other hand, the English version tells a completely different sequence of events, that word of the Sacred Realm's existence spread through Hyrule, which was the trigger of a great battle. What's more is that in Japanese, Lenaru states that the conflict ensued over the land of Hyrule, implying that the initiators of the war were in fact contending for leadership over the entire kingdom. Furthermore, this land, as it is illustrated in the Vision Link experiences, is also the the same place where the Triforce, the most sacred object in the world, was left behind. These events are also told in Ocarina of Time, which is similar to Twilight's Princess in that the Japanese version once again strongly implies that the Kingdom of Hyrule in its entirety is the land where the Triforce, the very essences of the goddesses, was left, which introduces another important reason as to why Hyrule is a sacred place. A sacred realm or place would be wherever the Triforce rests, and Hyrule was the first place for this to happen. In other words, it's not that the Triforce lies within the sacred realm that's within Hyrule, but rather that the Triforce lies within Hyrule, which is the sacred land. In English, Lenaru elaborates that these initiators of the conflict over the land of Hyrule were in fact interlopers who excelled at magic. However, this isn't entirely accurate either, as in Japanese, it's detailed that in the midst of the people, persons who were proficient at magic appeared. Hyrule was not infiltrated by outsiders as the English version suggests, but rather they emerged from the midst of the people. In the vision, this is represented by the three dark links, symbolizing how these people once belonged to the light, but now belong to the darkness. No longer were they satisfied with equal power, they became greedy and desired more, as the vision illustrates with Link rushing towards the Triforce. Although the English text explains that the sorcerers attempted to establish dominion over the sacred realm, the same passage in Japanese specifies that these sorcerers desire to rule over the sacred land, with implications of that land being Hyrule, a story concept we are certainly not unfamiliar with. Simply put, the Japanese text tells a version of this story where the emergence of these sorcerers amidst the people who specifically sought to rule over Hyrule was the true cause of the war. It's not that there were interlopers who wanted to rule the dimension of the sacred realm, but rather it's that the common people of Hyrule were tempted by greed which fueled their desire to conquer the land because it was that sacred land. We can understand from this cutscene that the Triforce is depicted as the object desired by the magic users. Thus, conquering Hyrule, the sacred land, to harness the power of the Triforce can be concluded as their ultimate goal. This is illustrated when the Triforce is blocked from sight by a massive version of the fused shadow, symbolizing the sorcerer's desire to dominate Hyrule and obtain greater power. Their campaign to subjugate and claim the Triforce caused the gods to send the Light Spirits to seal away the sorcerer's magic. Subsequently, they were then expelled from Hyrule by the gods and were banished from the Light World to another place. This place is what we know as the Twilight Realm, a parallel dimension to the realm of Hyrule. But what exactly is the Twilight Realm, apart from being a world of perpetual twilight? On the surface, it may seem like the Twilight Realm resembles a kind of dark world, a realm of the Demon King and the place that's typically associated with Ganon or Ganondorf. It's even stated that the Twilight Realm is the complete opposite of the Light World and that it could not mingle with the Light. Does this mean that the gods really did sentence the sorcerers, former light dwellers, to the dark world, essentially sentencing them to hell? Initially, it may seem like that is certainly what happened, especially considering how Midna words it, emphasizing how none could return to the world of light. In fact, these former light dwellers' dreadful fate is even further exemplified when looking at the text for this same passage in Japanese. And so, the people who were cast aside to the Shadow World were not permitted to return to their former world. It's not just that these people who were sentenced to this other world couldn't return to the World of Light, but it's specifically that they weren't permitted to. 
They were forced to be there, permanently exiled from the world of light. It does sound unpleasant, however, further analysis of the Japanese text reveals how these people may have actually been sent to the Twilight Realm for a very specific reason, and not for the sole purpose of simply being disposed of. The first clue that the Twilight Realm is different from the Dark World is that in the Japanese version, the Twilight Realm is called the Shadow World. This revelation of the Shadow World's true name makes it clear as to what exactly it is. Just as light allows shadows to form, the Shadow World quite literally exists as a shadow to the Light World, the very same world created by the three goddesses. In fact, just as Zelda puts it, the Shadow and Light World are two aspects of equality. They influence each other, and one is not able to exist without the other. At the same time, the English version continues to deliver explanations that are rather contradictory to the original Japanese text, which results in some understandable confusion about the truth of the lore and story. A prime example of when this happens is when Link and Midna are moments away from entering the Shadow World via the mirror, wherein in English, Midna explains how some refer to her realm as a world of shadows, which makes it sound unpleasant. As we've established, the Twilight Realm's true title is the Shadow World in Japanese, making this English passage glaringly conflictive, whereas the same passage in Japanese is actually where Midna clears up any misunderstandings that suggest that the Shadow World is the same as the Dark World. The Shadow World, they act like it's the other world or something of the sort, but that's not what it is. The Japanese word that Midna uses for otherworld is anoyo, which is a term that can also refer to the underworld, world after death, and afterlife. Midna emphasizes that anoyo is what the shadow world is not, clarifying precisely that the shadow world is a place that does not have any connection to demons at all. Instead, the shadow world is a calm and beautiful place that has a unique influence on its inhabitants, which is again more faithfully described in Japanese as a place where everyone living in the glow of that twilight had a pure heart and a gentle state, as opposed to the less descriptive English text which describes the inhabitants as pure and gentle. The beings who live in the glow of the Shadow World's twilight are known in English as the Twilight, or perhaps more fittingly in Japanese as the Shadow Tribe. It is implied that one of the effects of the Shadow World calms the hearts of its inhabitants. Hence, the Shadow Tribe are not malicious people, unlike their ancestors, as Midna explains. It wasn't until Ganondorf was sent to the Shadow World by the Sages, when his malice threw the Shadow World into a state of chaos and transformed the peaceful Shadow Tribe into deadly Shadow Beasts, which the Hyrule Historia also confirms. Even Midna is affected by this evil power, which consequently causes her to lose her true form. I fully explain the terrifying reality of Ganondorf's power in this video that reveals the unique connotations of malice exclusive to the the Japanese version should you be interested. Midna reveals to us that the Shadow Tribe rely on the light that illuminates from the souls, a vital light source that, in English, she describes as being the same as the sun in the light world. However, this isn't accurate. In Japanese, Midna expresses specifically how the souls are entirely different from the radiance of Hyrule's light. The fact that the radiance of the souls are different to that of Hyrule's is significant because although the Shadow Tribe are the descendants of the banished sorcerers who were once reliant on the light of Hyrule for life, over time they adapted and evolved to their new world and living conditions. Considering how they are the descendants of former light dwellers, it would make sense that the Shadow Tribe still require light to live. Therefore, just as a gentle light radiates during the hour of twilight in the light world, the Shadow Tribe now rely on the soft light that illuminates from the soul, their source of all life. Without it, they transform into monsters, which is exactly what happens when Zant, with the help of Ganondorf, seals away the souls, causing the Shadow World to be enveloped in darkness. Zant even states that Ganondorf, who he refers to as his god, has a single desire to suffocate the shadow and light world in darkness, which is consistent with his previous evil intentions to make a dark world in other Zelda games such as in A Link to the Past. With that said, there are also instances in Twilight Princess where the English text suggests that there is a sort of intimate connection between light and darkness, such as when Zelda states that darkness and light is one of balance. However, Zelda's mention of the balance that the dark and light worlds are in is absent in Japanese. 
Instead, the truth is as you would expect from a malicious demon king. Ganondorf desires to rule over the goddess's creations and morph them into realms of darkness. In Twilight Princess, Ganondorf demonstrates these evil desires by manipulating Zant and sharing his power with him in order to fulfill his goal. Zant then uses his newly obtained evil power during his conquest of Hyrule to drown the entire kingdom in Twilight. Inhabitants in the affected regions are transformed into spirits or are mutated into shadow monsters, completely oblivious of their vulnerable state. We know that the reason for Link's transformation into a wolf when he comes into contact with the Twilight is because of his status as the chosen hero with the Triforce of Courage. But why is it when Link enters the Shadow World, he isn't transformed? and instead is able to retain his human form. Likewise, how and why does the Twilight in Hyrule force beings to become spirits? By looking at the original Japanese text of a particular section of the game, we can reveal the answers to all of these mysteries and discover how the version of the Twilight in Hyrule is actually very different to the Twilight in the Shadow World. In the Shadow World, Link is only forced to transform when he comes into contact with the Black Fog or Cloud, despite wielding the Master sword. In English, Midna warns that these black clouds are in fact shadow crystals that's purpose is to blot out light. Whereas in Japanese, the extent of her explanation of this dark power is a little more in depth. This black fog is the light absorbing shadow crystals that Zant produced with his magic. It's not that the shadow crystals just block out light, but they completely absorb it. Furthermore, Midna discloses an even greater secret hiding in the truth of these crystals that is once again absent in the English text. In English, we are told that it is Zant who is responsible for stealing the light from the spirits and plundering Hyrule into twilight. Considering the point in the game we are at here, this information is of no surprise. It's specifically what Midna says in this passage in Japanese that uncovers the full truth of the twilight. It's accountable for stealing the light from the spirits and turning Hyrule into twilight. The most important distinction here is that the Japanese text refers to the shadow crystals as the subject's matter, meaning the reality is that these black clouds are the substance that's created by the light absorbing shadow crystals, a form of Ganondorf's evil magic that Zant manipulates to transform Hyrule into a kind of dark world plagued in an artificial twilight. This is also confirmed by Zelda, who describes the borrowed power that Zant wields as evil, which is different to shadow magic. We've witnessed the true extent of how Ganon's dark worlds can warp reality before, such as in A Link to the Past. In this iteration of the dark world, everything appears gritty, nature is withered, and the inhabitants are forced into sinister forms. The shadow crystals are a form of borrowed evil power that Zant utilizes to cast black clouds of twilight over the whole kingdom of Hyrule, which which, much like the dark worlds we've seen before, also causes a transformation to occur to those trapped inside. This explains why this unnatural twilight changes beings into spirits or shadow creatures. At the same time, Link changes into a wolf because the light that exists within him has all been completely absorbed as a result of the shadow crystals. Simply returning to the light world is not enough to erase the invading evil and restore the light that's been lost. For those reasons, the perpetual calming twilight of the shadow world is different in nature compared to the artificial twilight created by Zant. The latter exerts a corrupting effect on Hyrule, while the former is similar to the glow of the twilight that radiates naturally in Hyrule during sunset. This distinction between the shadow world and Hyrule's twilight affected areas is made even clearer in the Japanese text as the unnatural twilight that envelops Hyrule is referred to as simply twilight, whereas the world that Midna comes from is always called the shadow world. This is significant as they are two very different kinds of places. The English text makes this a little unclear, referring to both areas as a place of twilight. The effect the shadow world has on its inhabitants converts them into shadows, beings with a pure heart and a gentle nature who become unable to exist freely in the full radiance of the sun's light. It is not a world of evil, but rather one that is enveloped in a natural twilight, which explains why Link is not forced into his wolf form when he enters the shadow world unless he comes into contact with the black clouds. It's entirely possible that if Link was confined to the shadow world for an extended duration, Without the protection of the Triforce of Courage, he too may feel the effects of the Shadow World and become a shadow similar to those of the Shadow Tribe.
In a story where references to shadow and darkness are abundant, clarifying the distinction between them can be challenging, especially during localization. However, in the original Japanese text of Twilight Princess, this distinction between the worlds of light, shadow, and darkness is much clearer. When it comes to the sacred realm, in Japanese, it's the kingdom of Hyrule in its entirety that is described as the sacred place, and as the shadow world is quite literally a shadow that's cast from Hyrule, the connection between these two worlds appears strikingly more intimate. Without light, a shadow cannot form, thus eliminating all light will turn everything into darkness, a typical domain for the Demon King. This very much implies that the shadow world is the same as Hyrule in that it is also technically a creation of the goddesses. I'd very much love to see a return of the Twilight and Shadow World in the future to allow us to learn even more about this fascinating place. On that note, that'll be all from me. I hope you found this video enjoyable and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you soon!